Hello there and welcome to this presentation on software design patterns. This is a quick and basic introduction. Our agenda is very simple. We're going to take a look at the definition of a design pattern, see a few examples, and then discuss a few do's and don'ts when it comes to applying software design patterns. This is the Wikipedia definition. In software engineering, a software design pattern is a general reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within a given context in software design. So there are two phrases that are important here. We have a commonly occurring problem and we have a general reusable solution. And the general reusable solution in the world of software design is software design pattern. Here is a simple example from our day-to-day -day life about problem solution pair. How do we prevent collisions at street intersections? Few of the common problems and common solutions are put a traffic light, put a stop sign, or provide a traffic circle. All these are perfectly acceptable solutions to prevent collisions at street intersections. There may be one or more of these solutions that are more applicable in a certain scenario, but this is a solution to a commonly occurring problem and the solution is repeatable. So these solutions are what we can call as pattern or implementation pattern, even though they are probably not called pattern in the real world. Here is another example, and this time it's from a perspective of an information technology professional. The load on a web server becomes unmanageable. So you have a box in the center, which is a web server, and that is connected by various types of clients, mobile applications or mobile browsers, laptops, or desktop computers. All these devices, even cameras or other kinds of sensors, web server serves these devices, and there may be many of these devices. Let's assume you have hosted your website on the server, and your website becomes very popular. As a result, the traffic grows, and the web server cannot manage the traffic. So what you do is you do what is known as scaling up, which means you add more computational power and memory to the server. But there's some limit to which you can scale up a server or scale, scale up any kind of infrastructure. So a very common scenario or very common solution in the scenario is network load balancing. And the way it is done is on the right hand side you have a collection of servers and then there is a reverse proxy server which is the box in the center with the line and that is something that you can implement in software or hardware or a combination which routes traffic to these three servers based on different kinds of algorithms could be based on a round robin basis so the first request goes to the first web server the next one goes to the next server and so on and so forth or it could be done based on the load that the server has. This is a solution, a repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem of web server not being able to handle traffic. Let's move on to a software design example. The problem is we need just one instance of a class and how do we prevent a client program or class from creating multiple instances of the same class. You make the class singleton. So that's the solution. A singleton design pattern, which means you're going to make the constructor private so nobody outside the class or no program outside the class can create instances of the class. And then you're going to expose the only instance via a static property or a method. So in our example, the class is called singleton class. It's got a private attribute called instance. Its constructor is private. And then you have a static property that returns the only instance. 
So this is a repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem where an application just needs one instance of a class, not multiple. And as a result, we implement a repeatable solution and that is highly reusable and it's called the singleton design pattern. Some general considerations about software design patterns. Repeatable solutions to a common occurring problem. That's what we call as a software design pattern. Design patterns are generally at a high level. They are a blueprint. They can be implemented in multiple programming languages, but the design patterns in general do not dictate which programming language or platform is being used to implement them. There are differences in the way design patterns or implementation patterns are implemented in different platforms, but in general, design patterns do not dictate that. Design patterns have existed for decades and maybe they were not called design patterns. Sometimes, I believe in the late 70s, there was an author who came up with the word pattern. And then in 1994, this book, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, by the gang of four, which is these four authors, came up with the term. And they were not the inventors of the term, but they definitely made the term very popular, the term design pattern. There are several books on design pattern. My favorite one is a book by Martin Fowler and its Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. There's also another book by, um, I forgot the name of the author, but it's called Head First Design Patterns, which includes the same design patterns that are in the Gang of Force book, but it explains it, in my opinion, in a much easier way. And again, don't confine yourself to the Gang of Four book. Read the book by Martin Fowler and several other authors like Craig Larman. Um, there's also a book by Bob Martin and there are several other authors. So take a look at those and learn design patterns. And again, don't forget analysis and implementation patterns that are more confined to analysis or implementation. Quick recap, you have a commonly occurring problem, which is the motivation to go for design patterns. And then this is the solution. The general reusable solution is the pattern. And the pattern can be solution pattern or analysis or design pattern. And there may be some scenarios where those are not called patterns at all, but those patterns are everywhere, not just in the software world, not just in the world of information technology. They are everywhere. Software design patterns, again, this is just extension of the previous bullet. They are everywhere. They are not confined to the Gang of Four book. Most software design patterns work similarly. So when you start learning design patterns, you will find a lot of similarities. And many design patterns appear to be almost the same. But the basic things to learn about design patterns, learn basic object-oriented constructs such as abstract class interfaces, class coupling, how to override methods, and subclassing. And if you know all those concepts very well, you will be able to understand design patterns. But they will, many of the design patterns do look similar. Can you think of any scenario, even in your real life not related to programming where you invented something maybe a design pattern that you never read from a book i'm sure you have a few let's discuss a few do's when it comes to applying design patterns always critically evaluate if the design pattern that you love and you think is applicable to your design is a good fit and i'll share my experience with using design patterns in a scenario. There was a software design problem I was trying to solve and I was hell-bent on using the decorator design pattern. And after one and a half hours of discussion slash argument with a person very experienced with software design patterns, I learned one, that the decorator design pattern was not applicable in my scenario and two, I did not even understand 
decorator design pattern correctly. So kind of embarrassing, but that's important to critically evaluate if the design pattern is applicable. Always discuss with someone who is more experienced. Keep in mind that more than one design may be correct for a given scenario. So different types of design from two different individuals may be perfectly applicable in the same scenario. Consider how extensible you want your design to be. In software design, we always make compromises. If you want your system to be extremely fast, sometimes you have to give up on some features. The more flexible your system is, the more complex it most likely may be. So always consider how important extensibility is because design patterns do make your software more extensible. However, they make your software more complex in majority of the scenarios. And a few don'ts and other considerations. Don't force design patterns to your design. I'll tell you a story. When I was learning English, and I'm not a native English speaker, but my teacher, my English teacher, happened to be native English speaker. She was mad at me because I used to force English words into my expression. Words that sometimes I did not even understand very well. And that's the tendency of most software designers who learn design patterns for the first time. You feel like forcing design patterns to your design and that's a big no-no. You should not look at it that way and always critically evaluate design patterns before applying those. Also, this is something which I've put there as a question mark. Since design patterns often complicate your design, be very, very careful with when you use them. So the complicate part of the software design pattern is again debatable. But if your software design is getting more complicated, what are you gaining in return? And is that more important than making your software more complicated? So that brings us to the end of this presentation. Hope you like this presentation. I will be posting many more videos on design patterns their implementation and several other topics if you like this video please subscribe to this channel and your feedback is always appreciated thank you